Summary of Fasting, Feasting by Anita Desai Uma and her younger sister Aruna grow up in a traditional Indian home in a small town in India in the late 1970s. Their parents, who are only known as Mama and Papa, try to control what happens to their girls by teaching them how to do things around the house that are usually done by women. Uma doesn't care much about getting married or doing housework. Instead, she loves going to her religious school, even though she gets bad grades. Mama and Papa, whom Uma calls Mama Papa, don't have much patience for Uma. Papa, a middle-level government official with a weak ego, runs his family by telling everyone what to do every day and what their futures will be. Mama is proud to be married to a powerful man, so she works with Papa on almost everything. When Arun is born, Uma's parents tell her she has to quit school to take care of her new baby brother. Uma runs away to the nun's school and begs Mother Agnes in vain to try to convince Mama Papa to let her go back to school. Uma has her first seizure on the floor of the convent, after Mother Agnes tells her she can't help. Anamika, Uma's beautiful cousin, could go to Oxford University, but her parents, Lily Auntie and Bakul Uncle, won't let her. Instead, they find the richest, smartest man they can find and marry her off to him. Soon, Uma and her parents find out that Anamika's husband and mother-in-law beat her and treat her like a servant. Men aren't as interested in Uma as they are in her younger sister as she grows up. Mama and Papa give up trying to marry Uma off after three failed attempts, including two payment scams and an old man who married Uma and then left her. Aruna, on the other hand, gets a lot of marriage offers. She picks Arvind, a rich man from Bombay. After her expensive wedding, Aruna moves to Bombay to start a new life. She rarely comes back to visit. When she does go home, she treats her family, especially Uma, like they are beneath her. Papa makes Arun study every night until he is too tired, even though he gives him a lot of care and attention. Arun has been a vegetarian since he was a child, which his parents don't like because they think it's weak and out of date. Uma is ignored and stuck at home, so she tries to leave whenever she can. On one occasion, her relative Miramasi, a religious widow who moves around the country freely, tricks Mama Papa into letting her take Uma with her to an ashram or pilgrimage house. There, Uma walks around freely and happily for a month until Mama Papa sends her cousin Ramu to bring her back. Women in Uma's town try to get her out of her stifling family life by asking her to hang out and work with them. Dr. Dutt comes to Mama Papa's house another time to ask Uma to work for her, but Mama and Papa say no. Papa won't let Uma go to the doctor even though her eyes are hurting. One night, Anamika's family finds out that she was burned to death on her porch. It's not clear if it was a suicide or a murder. Lily Auntie and Bakul Uncle come to the Holy River to spread Anamika's ashes. Now, Arun is the main character of the book. Arun works hard and wins a scholarship to study in the United States. When he gets to Massachusetts, he is so tired that he pulls away and spends his first year of school alone. The next summer, Arun stays with Mr. and Mrs. Patton and their two children, Rod and Melanie, against his will. Mrs. Patton welcomes Arun with open arms, but he soon sees how hard it is for her to fight against her husband's strong will. Mr. Patton and Rod, who is sporty and focused on himself, don't pay attention to Mrs. Patton and Melanie because they are too busy working, working out, and playing sports. Mrs. Patton takes Arun shopping because she wants him to teach her how to become a vegetarian. In the meantime, Arun gets sick of the way Americans live. Soon, he finds out that Melanie, the daughter, is bulimic. He tries hard to find a way to tell Mrs. Patton, who doesn't know what's wrong, what's going on. At the same time, a cashier at the grocery shop tells Mrs. Patton that she looks like she is pregnant. Mrs. Patton becomes concerned with getting a tan, which makes her ignore her daughter even more. At the end of the summer, Mrs. Patton takes Arun and Melanie to a pond. Arun loves swimming because it makes him feel like he can get away from himself. Later, when Mrs. Patton is out in the sun, Arun goes to look for Melanie, who has disappeared. He finds her lying in a pile of her own vomit, only half awake. As soon as Mrs. Patton gets there, 
she is shocked by what she sees. Melanie goes to a place to help her get better, and Rod leaves for college. Mr. Patton gets a second job, and Mrs. Patton starts to learn about Eastern religion. Uma sends Arun a carefully wrapped package, but Arun gives the contents to Mrs. Patton and goes back to school at the university. About the author Desai was born to a German mother and a Bengali father. Her name at birth was Anita Mazumder. She spoke a mix of German, Hindi, Bengali, Urdu, and English as she grew up. She started writing stories when she was young. She studied English literature at the University of Delhi and soon after married Ashvin Desai, a philosopher and software company director. They have four children together, including writer Kiran Desai. At the time, Desai was feeling down about her writing job because not many Indian writers had been published in India or the UK. After a lot of hard work, her book Cry the Peacock came out in the UK in 1963, much to her relief. Since then, she has written 17 books, including In Custody, which was made into a movie in 1993, and several collections of short stories. She has taught writing classes at American universities all over the country. Many of her works are set in India, but she also writes stories that take place in the US and other places around the world. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.